see. Amen. Amen. We are online. Praise God. Praise God. It's such a blessed privilege to be here with you today to worship the Lord God Almighty in spirit and in truth. My name is Pastor Al Kennan. It's my pleasure. It's my privilege. It's my honor to be here this morning to facilitate this prayer conference call where we get the chance to worship the Lord God Almighty. Amen. The one and only, the one, he who reigns, he who sits on the throne, he, he who is in control. I know that we are going through and experiencing what we're experiencing in our individual lives, in our collective lives, but that does not negate, that does not change, that does not diminish the truth. That the Lord God Almighty is the Lord. That he is the one who makes sure that everything we have, that everything we are, that everything that we can be uh, comes to pass. So, again, I am I'm ecstatic. I am excited. I am overjoyed uh, about being here. And I believe, <coughs> excuse me that the Lord God Almighty is going to do something incredible, something amazing, something awesome uh, in our midst uh, uh, this morning. And I believe that you're going to see God bless you, bless your neighbor, bless your family, bless your community. This morning, because he's going to share something with you and it's going to be a blessing. Amen. Let's do this. Amen. Let's not tarry any longer. Let's jump right in to our call here. Let's begin with our opening word of prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, you are the one who has made this day. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. Father God, we praise you, God, and we exalt you, God, for your faithfulness. We praise you, God, for always having our best interests at heart. We praise you, God, for <clears throat> sitting high and looking low. We praise you, God, for going before us and preparing a way. We praise you, God, for protecting us from all hurt, harm, injury, danger, and death. God, we praise you, God, for just being an awesome, wonderful, mighty God. God, you do so much for us. Excuse me. That is not even funny. That God, if you were to stop doing just a few things, we would be in trouble. For God, where would we go? Who would we uh, be able to interact with? Who would be, we be able to rely upon? Father God, you yourself are our source, our strength, our being, our one, our only, our all in all and God we need you we need you right now we need you this minute for there's something that we're dealing with something that we're going through and God if the truth be told it's more than we can handle it's more than we can deal with and so, God, we pray. We pray that, God, you will be our Lord. That you will be our all in all. That you will be our sustainer. That you will be uh, just a wonderful, loving father to us. God, we're going to spend some time this morning praying. We're going to spend some time this morning sharing our concerns, our worries, our problems, our predicaments, our tribulations. 
But God, we know we're sharing it with you because you have the power, you have the ability to overcome all that we're dealing with. So God, transform now our messes into our messages. Transform our tests into our testimonies. And God, use us so that someone may come to know you through the free pardons of their sins this morning, today. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Good morning for those who uh, may not, uh, I may not have spoke to at the very beginning because you just uh, connected with the call. You just came online. Good morning. I want to personally welcome you to Inspirational Wednesdays. Now, if you have your Bibles, if you have a device with a Bible app on it, please turn with me to the Gospel of Mark. Amen. The scriptorial focus of our devotional comes from Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. It's Mark chapter 12. Verses 41 through 44. Amen. Uh, I will read from the New Revised Standard Version of the Scripture. Amen. It reads, Jesus sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then Jesus called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed, contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on thus far the word of god the title of our devotional this morning is when sacrificing becomes becomes sinful when sacrificing becomes sinful amen for the longest time i believe that whenever we talked about sacrificing to the Lord God Almighty. No discussion would be complete without spending time highlighting and addressing the widow's might. Many of us are aware of the widow's might. It's a pericope of scripture uh, where Jesus observed a widow literally give everything she had as an offering at the Jewish temple. We're told that she only had two small copper coins. Together, the entire value was merely one penny. This woman took the only money she had and put it all into the treasury. So many times we have heard preachers, Sunday school teachers, midweek Bible study, instructors and other ministers rant and rave about the faithfulness of this widow we've been told that if we really want to sacrifice we must sacrifice like this widow did we must be willing to surrender every cent we own to the lord if we really want to demonstrate our faithfulness and our love for him, yada, 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 yada. As we come together this morning for today's edition of Inspirational Wednesdays, I want to challenge that conventional understanding from this particular biblical narrative. And before we jump too far into our devotional this morning, I want to thank the Reverend Dr. Andre Reznor for helping me shift how I understand how I uh, understand Mark uh, chapter 12 verses 41 through 44 
and what it means to sacrifice. Dr. Reznor's teaching was fundamental to the shift that God our Father has made in my understanding. With that said, what if I told you that the widow's might is not a story of faithfulness and celebration, but rather it's a story of condemnation and conviction. Could you handle that? Would your sensibilities become so offended that you would immediately tune me out? Or would you stop for a moment and let our Heavenly Father use me to teach you something you, have, you, you haven't ever considered before today? At issue in this biblical narrative is the offering this widow made. We are explicitly told that this woman literally deposited into the Jewish treasury all the money she owned. She only, she only had two small copper coins to her name. Together they only possessed the value of a penny. Yet when it came to time to make her deposit her offering, she put both coins in the treasury. We assume that this widow did something good by virtue of Jesus commenting on her giving. We assume that because Jesus brought attention to her giving, then this woman had to have had done, had to have had done something good and spiritual. The problem with this kind of thinking is that it completely ignores both God's previous instructions and Jewish norms about how widows were supposed to be treated and cared for. Jesus' commenting on her actions weren't necessarily a moment of high celebration. Instead, this declaration by the Son of God comes across more as judgment and condemnation. Let me show you why. Our first point this morning, amen, is before this moment here in Mark, in the Gospel of Mark, the Lord God Almighty never required any believer to sacrifice at 100%. Before this moment right here in the Gospel of Mark, the Lord God Almighty never required any believer to sacrifice at 100%. Before we really focus on the particulars of Mark chapter 12 verses 41 through 44, let's deal with what the great I Am required from his followers in terms of sacrifice. When I read and study the scriptures, especially the Old Testament scriptures, I have yet to come across any law, commandment, provision, or experience where Yahweh required the Israelites to sacrifice to him 100% of their material possessions. I could be wrong, and if I am, I can stand to be corrected. But as I read the scriptures, the God I served required the descendants of Abraham Isaac and Jacob to sacrifice a portion of their material possessions. This portion was typically referred to as the quote-unquote first fruits. Regardless of whether the Israelite in question was a herder or a farmer, Yahweh required a first fruit sacrifice from this person as a sign and demonstration of his or her gratitude to God for blessing him or her as he had. Later on in scripture, the terminology used when the Israelites sacrificed to God shifted away from first fruits to a one-tenth tithe of any harvest of crop, birth of animal livestock, or acquisition of any money in the normal course of doing business and or simply living. In Genesis, we observe Abraham give a sacrificial offering to Melchizedek of one-tenth of everything he owned. Time and time again, the Israelites tended to God or the people God chose one-tenth of whatever the offerer in question possessed at that moment. Until Luke's acts, amen, until we get to the Gospel of Luke and the New Testament uh, book of Acts, because they're really one book, all right? We'll deal with that later. Until we get to Luke Acts, and until it was written in approximately 
70 to 75 AD, we are never told that God our Father ever required any believer to sacrifice 100% of their material possessions for him. Never. We're never told that. I have to believe that this requirement to sacrifice a portion of what an Israelite owned and or possessed to the Lord above was still in effect when Jesus observed the widow drop the only two small copper coins she owned, she owned into the Jewish treasury. If that is so, the priests and other Jewish leaders that were authorized to operate the Jewish temple conducted such operation in a way that literally demanded and required the people to sacrifice more than what Yahweh required. Our first point this morning is before this moment right here in the Gospel of Mark. The Lord God Almighty never required any believer to sacrifice at 100%. Our second point this morning. The Lord God Almighty ex exempted widows, along with orphans and aliens, from the sacrificial requirements Torah imposed upon normal Israelites. The Lord God Almighty exempted widows, along with orphans and aliens, from the sacrificial requirements Torah impose upon normal Israelites. If operating the temple treasury incorrectly wasn't bad enough, the priests and other Jewish leaders that operated the, operated the temple did something else. Dispersed throughout the Old Testament book Leviticus are repeated instructions that widows are supposed to be taken care of. Along with orphans and any straggling aliens, the Israelites were under divine command to care for widows, just as Yahweh had cared for Israel when it was enslaved in Egypt. The purpose of this commandment was to always remind the Israelites that there was a time when they couldn't care for themselves. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob didn't want his people to forget where they came from. He didn't want them to forget how they had nothing when they encountered him. He didn't want them to ignore the truth that everything they then currently were was a direct result of his love, grace, mercy, and favor. Widows were a special class of persons to the great Jehovah. Many of them were old women who had lived their lives caring for their families. These women's first ministry was their husbands and their children. In many cases, these families also included parents of the groom and the bride that had become too old to live by themselves and care for themselves. Again, I could be wrong, and if I am, someone feel free to correct me. But I cannot help but believe that the Lord our God felt that these widows had earned a time of rest and respite. They had done so much that our Heavenly Father no longer expected or required them to live as they had. They were released from their legal requirements under Torah. But here in Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44, we see a system in place that requires widows to operate as if they weren't part of Yahweh's protected class of individuals. This widow came to the Jewish temple to deposit her last two small copper coins into the treasury because that is what the priests and other Jewish leaders required her and other widows like her to do. When Jesus observed this injustice occur, I believe that he wanted his disciples to take notice of it. I am convinced in the new movement he was creating, i.e. the church, Jesus did not want widows or other protected classes of persons abused and mistreated like the priests and other Jewish leaders were doing. He wanted his disciples to see explicitly how not to lead. I've learned that leadership isn't just about learning what to do as God's leaders. It's also learning what not to do in such capacity and abusing and mistreating the most vulnerable of our populations is an explicit no-no. 
Let me say this to someone right now. Let me say this so someone gets this, as so someone understands this. Good morning, Brother Kevin. Good morning. It's so good to see you um, uh, say this. Um, you can not tell a lie and still not get to heaven. You can uh, not murder and not get to heaven. You can never commit adultery and not get to heaven. You want to know why? Because God's rule, God's commandments are not conditioned simply on whether you lie, cheat, or steal, or commit adultery. They are conditioned on how you treat others. And God has explicitly said that we are to care for widows, orphans, and aliens. That's the commandment of God. And any time we mis mistreat the widows, i.e. our elders, any time we mistreat them, you have earned a special place on God's hit list. That's because God wants us to care for our elders like he cares for us. And someone here today has been disrespectful to, to, to your elder or elders. You've been cruel. You've been capricious. You've been disrespectful. Some of you have even physically hurt elders. If I was you, if I was you, I would fall on my feet. I'm fall on my knees in my face right this very instant. And, and, and beg God for forgiveness. Because if you've been one of those to mistreat, abuse, hurt, harm, or injure an elder, a widow, then you've got a special, a special uh, day coming up with the Lord. And I don't want to be there with you. In fact, you're going to be there by yourself because I'm not showing up with you on that one. No, sir. So, our first point this morning is, before this moment here in the Gospel of Mark, the Lord God Almighty never required, <coughs> excuse me, any believer to sacrifice at 100%. Let me say that again. Before this moment right here in Mark, the Lord God Almighty never required any believer to sacrifice at 100%. The second point is, the Lord God Almighty exempted widows along with orphans and aliens from the sacrificial requirements Torah imposed upon nor normal Israelites. And our last point this morning is the widow's might is a story of judgment and condemnation against those believers that have both the ability and the resources to truly sacrifice to the Lord God Almighty, but don't. Let me say that again. The widow's might is a story of judgment and condemnation against those believers that have both the ability and the resources to truly sacrifice to the Lord God Almighty, but don't. Having addressed the two previous points, we can now get to the ultimate point Jesus makes here in Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Remember, Jesus, as the Son of God, is sitting in his house, watching his people sacrifice to himself. What we observed, what he observed, were a whole lot of people that were financially and economically capable of making the sacrifices that God our Father required of them, yet when they actually approached the treasury to make their required sacrifices, none of them actually sacrificed anything of significance to the Lord. 
Mark explicitly says that these economically and financially wealthy people gave offerings from their excesses. They sacrificed from the money they had lying around in chests and banking accounts. What they placed in the Jewish treasury didn't remotely begin to approach a tenth of what they owned and possessed. If we had to assess exactly how much money these personal persons actually deposited in the treasury at the temple, it was probably barely 1% of everything they owned. We really shouldn't be surprised by this. Time and time again, many of us present-day Christians also don't sacrifice as the Lord God Almighty requires. I've been members of two separate churches, and I have pastored two churches. And in all instances, I've observed the same persons that drove up to churches in luxury cars from homes and houses in wealthy suburbs wearing the latest and most expensive clothing articles literally take out their checkbooks and write these churches $20 offerings. Here, God has gone out of his way to bless so many of us to have exactly what we have today and the best offering that we can give him is a $20 offering. Are you kidding me? Some of the same people out here popping their collars, how they don't eat here, they don't eat there, they don't go here, they don't go there, they don't wear this, they don't wear that, they don't uh, 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 do all kind of things. But yet, you give a piss poor offering to God. I mean, really, now let's take a moment and think about that thing for a second. Amen. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's think about that thing for a second. You are basically saying to God, you believe that Burberry, Louis Vuitton, Brooke Brothers, Gucci, uh, uh, Maserati, Mercedes, BMW, uh, Tiffany's, all these other places are more worthy of your financial fidelity than God is. And here's the thing. Unlike all these places you shopping at, God doesn't need your offering. So let's get this straight. He doesn't need your offerings. He requires an offering from you to see if you're going to put the things he is giving you before him. And so the funny thing is, when we can go to all these other places and pay wholesale, not just put, pay, pay, the, pay the whatever the price is, I, I don't care if they say so, that's still a markup, and pay it happily. And then turn around and come to church and write God a $20 check. Some folks should be in, should be feeling indicted right now. Some folks should be feeling uh, picked on right now. Or whatever you say, whatever the, the, the terminology that you use that you feel picked on, I'm not trying to pick on you. We're just calling it like it is. I've been pastor. I've seen the checks people write. I am pastor. I've sat next to people in church as a member, as they're writing their chest. They got them sitting around, and I watched them write 10, 5, 10, 20, 25 dollar checks for wearing furs, wearing gold, wearing diamonds, riding in Jaguars, Mercedes, and BMWs. 20 dollar checks. We have done what many of the people in the temple have done, did that day. And many of us should be ashamed of ourselves. We should be embarrassed by our faithlessness. The Lord has given us so much, all because he loves us, and all we can give him in return is $20.
That ain't faithfulness. That ain't loyalty and devotion. That ain't loving the Lord our God with all our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our soul. That is instead the opposite. That is faithlessness run amok. As we examine this biblical narrative, all of us should feel the judgment of the Lord. We should feel, we should feel spiritual condemnation. We should immediately recognize that what we call a sacrifice is actually a sin. It's a sin not just because we know we aren't giving the Lord God Almighty what he requires us to give him. Rather, it's a sin because there is someone within our six degrees of separation who has sacrificed to our God just like the widow did. When they gave our Heavenly Father an offering, they literally gave all they had. They literally had nothing else after they sacrificed. They demonstrated that their love of and faith in God is so much greater than ours. I know that someone here this morning is mad with me. You're in your feelings this morning. This ain't the devotional message that you wanted to receive this morning. You wanted to be encouraged. You wanted to be inspired. You were looking for empowerment. You wanted to walk away from this devotional feeling equipped. According to your sensibilities, this devotional ain't it. Well, you couldn't be, you couldn't be more wrong if you tried. You have received encouragement this morning. Encouragement not to sin when you sacrifice. You have received inspiration. Inspiration to do better as God's chosen servants. You have been empowered. Empowered with the word about what the Lord requires from us when we sacrifice. You have been equipped. Equipped with both the information and the methodologies necessary to submit offerings to the great I am that he will accept. You have received this morning the, the exact devotional that you came looking for. It's up to you to take this devotional and act as a servant of the Most High God that brings him honor, glory, and majesty. It's up to you. It's up to me. It's up to all of us. It's up to us to stop one, stop robbing God. It's up to us to stop robbing God. And again, some of you are in your feelings. You, you, you're not listening to me. Tithing isn't simply giving your talent. It's giving your time. It's, it's not simply giving your treasure. It's also giving about giving your time and your talent. You've been blessed with specific skills. You've been blessed with specific abilities. You've been blessed with time. Don't tell me you ain't got no time. I know that's bad English, but I mean, you follow me. Don't tell me you ain't got time. I know you do, because if you can make time to watch that four-hour football game, you got time. If you got time to watch your show, your, your, your television show, you got time. If you got time to sit on the phone and gossip about others, you got time. If you got time, to go uh, to your aerobics class, your spin class, to go play ball with the boys, to go to tea with the girls, to do brunch every Sunday after church, you got time. The question is, what's important to you? Because what's important to you is what you will invest your treasure in, is what you will uh, dedicate your time to, is what you will spend energy uh, utilizing your talent for. So what's important to you? You claim God is the most important thing in your life. Then why doesn't your ties reflect that? Yeah, I'm in your business today. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I hope I'm stepping on your toes today. Ouch, 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 ouch. Yes. Because let me tell you, 
You much rather you you much rather me step on your toes right now than the God to send you to hell. And I ain't no hellfire brimstone preacher. I rarely, hardly ever talk about hell. But this is one case, one situation you need to know. You keep robbing God, and rob not and not only robbing God, but forcing widows to sacrifice in ways He never intended. You gonna wish the only thing I did was step on your toes. I'm trying to give you a chance. God is trying to give you a chance. He's trying to save you from the, from the impending doom. If you know that you have been like the priests and the um, uh, and and the other Jewish temple leaders, and you have forced widows, elderly people, to do something that God does not require them to do, to give in a way God does not require them to give, you need to repent. And again, it may not be. You, it may not be because of the offerings they've given at church. It may be how you've treated them, the disrespect you've shown them, the abuse you've uh, uh, inflicted upon them. Whatever it is, you need to repent. And repent quickly. Okay, I'm done. Because I know uh, folks will start getting mad. They're going to start arranging their let's go uh, stone Pastor Al committing amen because i'm talking about something that we care not to deal with uh, amen in the church amen and yes two thousand years may have elapsed since this happened uh but there are some of us in the church who are still committing the same offense to god that these uh priests and temple leaders committed uh, back there when Jesus was walking the earth. Amen. Amen. Let's do this. Let's have a prayer over our devotional here this morning. And then what we'll do, we'll move into the devotional. I mean, the prayer section of our call where we get to hear from you, to receive from you, your prayers, your prayer requests, your praise reports, your words of encouragement, your testimonies and your witnesses. All right. Here, let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth. God, this is a day that you have made. We are rejoicing. We are glad in it. God, thank you for this devotional. No, it wasn't a raise the roof devotional. No, it wasn't a fall out in, uh, in the spirit devotional. No, it wasn't one that had us running around the church shouting at the top of our lungs, but it was still your devotional. It was still encouraging. It was still empowering. It was still equipping. It was still inspiring because God, you set before us a course correction. You set before us the information and methodologies we needed so that God, we would be able to better exercise our Christian discipleship and stewardship. For some of us, God, we had no idea that what we were doing was wrong. No one is taking the time to teach us, to show us a better way or the right way of handling it, of doing things. No one took the time to do that. But God, here we are, we are magnifying you, we're celebrating you because you did. And now that we know God, we want to do better. We want you to find uh, uh, that we're good and faithful servants, not that we are uh, abusers, manipulators, liars, cheaters, and stealers. Father God, for those of us that have known better and still haven't done right, we pray right now for forgiveness. That God, you forgive us of that sin. That God, you will forgive us of taking something that you meant to be an act of faithfulness and turning it into a filthy act of faithlessness. God, we don't we don't know why. Well, yeah, we do, God. We know why. For some reason, we have let greed 
take a take a hold of us and letting greed take a hold of us god we required from our widows from our elders things that you have instructed us not to require from them god we hope and pray that you have room in your heart to forgive us and that god you will restore us and that in forgiving us and restoring us As we repent for this sin, God, help us to turn away from this. Help us to never, ever do this again. Father God, we thank you for this space, this place, this time for this uh, prayer conference call. We pray right this very instant that God, you will continue to be with us. Your Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide with us on this prayer conference call, and that God, you will be blessed, that God, you will be anointed, that God, you will uh, be magnified and praised this morning, glorified beyond all measure. Father God, thank you for everyone who's on the call. God, we pray that right now you are preparing their hearts and their minds to share with us their prayer requests, their prayers, their praise reports, their words of encouragement, their testimonies, their witnesses, and that God, you are sympathizing and empathizing us so that God, when we, when we lift these prayer requests to you, God, you hear them, you receive them, and you move on these persons' lives and on their behalf, in their lives and on their behalf. Father God, we love you, and we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We're in the uh, 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 prayer request. I mean, I mean pray, prayer portion of our call, not the prayer request, the prayer portion of our call. Amen. Praise God. Trying to do too much. That's really what it is. Trying to monitor the computer, uh, the uh, live stream broadcast of this prayer conference call. That's right. Amen. We are literally on uh, a conference call here, a, a, a telephone conference call. Amen. I want to show it to you. Amen. Praise God. We are literally on the call. Amen. Uh, where uh, God is taking prayer. God has had us expand the call to put it online on Facebook. In fact, there are people who are even going to uh, be looking and watching, praying with us. See, amen, Inspirational Wednesdays on the call. Amen. That are going to be praying with us through faith, through YouTube, amen, because we're going to post the playback on this on YouTube. Now, before we open up the floor to receive your prayer requests, amen, let me give you your instructions, amen, how you submit your prayer requests uh, during this call, because we got several different means of people participating on the call. If you're on the actual live telephone conference call, I'm about to turn the mute function off. At that point, just speak up, tell us who you are, where you're calling from, what it is that we can pray for you, okay? Now, I know there's some people that are worried that uh, you got busybodies, rumor, gossip uh, spreader, rumor mongers uh, on the call. I pray that we don't. But if that you're worried about that, you're worried that those pe persons will get on here just to get your information to share it, then you don't have to tell us where you're from or who you are. Just tell us how we can pray for you. For you okay if you're on the actual uh, if you're on Facebook you you're participating in the call through Facebook this is what I want you to do I want you to take advantage of that comment box right down there at the bottom of the screen amen type in just as Pastor Kevin and Sister Brenda and, and Sister Gail and Sister Tanya have been doing type in your prayer requests that's right type it in and then what I will do, I'll raise it for you as if you're on the actual call. Amen. Praise God. For those persons who are watching us right now on YouTube, you're watching the playback recording of our call. You can still submit your prayers, uh, your prayer requests and your prayers to us. This is what I want you to do. I'll give you two ways to do it. If you have Facebook, and most of us do, go to my Facebook profile. My name is Al. Kenan, last name spelled K-E-N-N-O-N, -N -N. 
go to my Facebook profile, click the message radio button, and send me a private message with your prayer request. If you're not on Facebook, you should have email. Email me. My email address is Pastor Al Kennan the third at gmail.com. P A S T O R A L K E N N O N I I I at gmail.com. Send me the email, send me the private message, and then what I will do when I receive it, I will pray for you right then. And then what I do, I'll bring your prayer request back to Inspir the next edition of Inspiration Wednesday so all the prayer warriors can pray with you too. Amen. You're going to get double for your trouble. Now, let me go ahead and say, I hear someone in your spirit, in your uh, feelings right now. So wait a second, Pastor Al, why they get double for their trouble and I not? You are getting double for your trouble. Let me tell you how you're getting double for your trouble. The word says where two or more people are gathered in the presence of God, so is he. And here's a blessing about uh, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. When he shows up, he brings his daddy and his Holy Spirit with him. So you've got three of the most important persons, entity in all creation participating in prayer with you right now. I'm touching and agreeing with you. You're touching and agreeing with me. Jesus, the, the, the Holy Trinity is here with us. So why would you be tripping? That's, that's the ultimate double for your trouble. That's the ultimate double. And so with that said, why don't we begin sharing our prayer request, our praise report. Amen. Good morning, Sister Liza. Uh, uh, so that we can begin praying. Here, let me cut off. Let me turn off the um, uh, mute function. Oh, that did it turn off? Okay, that should have turned off. Oh, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Well, amen. The, the, the phone is tripping. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we're not going to let uh, the phone stop us from... Uh, getting in our prayer, our praise reports, prayer requests. Amen. If anyone's on the call, come online, come on Facebook. For some reason, uh, we are having difficulties on the phone. It will not let us turn off the mute function. Usually it won't let us turn it on. And so we get all the background noise while people are on the call. Now today, it won't let us turn it off. So we have to figure out what's going on with that. Uh, amen. Praise God. Uh, so let's start with prayer, with our prayer. And I want to start with this particular prayer, okay? Amen. I want us to be mindful that there's something the Lord has called each, us each to do. There's something that he has laid at your feet and my feet and has declared that there are no other way, no, there's no other person that's able to do what you and I have been called to do. We think there are. We, we, we think there are other persons that can do what uh, we, are, we are called to do. And so we don't do it, not realizing that we are holding the entire body up from doing what it's called to do. Because the rest of the body is waiting for us to do what we're doing, what, do what we need to do, what we're called to do. And so I want to begin this morning praying for those persons who you know you've been called. You know that the Lord has assigned a specific task to you. But for whatever reason, you're running. 
And I don't want anyone to get scared. I don't want anyone to sign off to run away from me thinking I'm calling someone to ministry. I am not calling anyone to ordain clerical ministry. That's not what this is about. What I'm saying is every one of us has an assignment to do. And that assignment is ministry. And believe it or not, you are so essential to God's plan that by not doing what he's tasked you with doing, you are holding up the rest of the body from doing what it needs to do. So I want to pray for someone. Amen. I want to pray for someone this morning. If you're called to do something, but you're not doing it for whatever reason, don't worry, you're on the virtual altar. All right, dear, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God. Father God, we acknowledge that you have indeed called us to play specific roles, to fulfill specific duties and responsibilities, to be specific parts of your body. What I'm called to do, God, may not be what my neighbor is called to do, and what my neighbor is called to do may not be what I'm called to do, God. It really doesn't matter what it is we're each called to do. It matters that we are obedient enough, trusting enough, and faithful enough to do whatever it is you called us to do. For someone, God, the call is simply to be present. To engage in the ministry of presence. For someone else, the, 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 the calling is simply to engage in the ministry of encouragement. For someone else, the, 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 the ministry is simply to be a, a be, to engage in the ministry of help. For someone else, the, 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 the uh, calling is simply to engage in the, the ministry of administration. Whatever it is, God, the, we, we know what the call is. I mean, we can pretend like we don't know what we're called to do. We can pretend, we can feign ignorance regarding our calling. But God, we know what we're called to do. Because it's the very same pull, urge, tugging, desire that's right, right there at the forefront of our minds, our spirits, our bodies, and our hearts when we wake up each morning. So we know what we're called to do. For whatever reason, we just aren't doing it. God, I pray that you would help us see fulfilling our callings as yet another form of obedience. Just like you required us to pray, just like you required us to study your words, your word, serving in the capacity that you've attacked tasked us with is obedience too and so God we pray right this very moment right this very morning that God you will help us to say yes you will help us to serve in the capacities that you've assigned to us you will help us to be the Christian disciples and stewards that you're calling us to be. No, God, this is not a prayer uh, calling persons into ordained clerical ministry. God, instead, this is a prayer merely encouraging whoever it is to pick up their tool, pick up their hammer, pick up their saw, pick up their nails, pick up their drill, pick up their level, pick up whatever it is and begin work on building, on constructing whatever it is you would have them build and construct. Father God, I'm thankful for all the brothers and sisters that you've surrounded me with. And I pray, God, that you continue to bless them and move in their lives in ways, God, that they, don't, they can't even fathom and aren't even aware of. 
This is in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everybody. Amen. Praise God. If you have a prayer request, praise report, um, 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 uh, words of encouragement, testimony, or witness, and you would like to share that with us, please jump in right now. Give us your name and where you're calling from, and we will go from there. Amen. You know what? Why did I do that? You know, I'm so used to doing that, but the phone won't unmute. Lord, little, little, little laugh, little, little humor here. Amen. So let's look. Instead, let's look in, in the, um, I see prayer requests dropping. You drop, amen, praise God. I see uh, prayer requests uh, coming in online. Let's see what we have. Amen, praise God. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Smith. Good morning, Evangelist Jasmine. Good morning, Sister Olive. Amen. Good morning. Uh, amen. I saw a prayer request. Amen. Uh, where did I see that prayer request? Okay. Lord, my eyes are getting bad. Okay, here. Gail. Amen. She says, please pray for me for healing and strength. She said, these holidays are going to be very hard without Teresa. In fact, thank you, Sister Gail. That, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that prayer request. Let me tell you uh, tell us something. Uh, don't fall for the commercial advertisements of Christmas and these holiday seasons, Thanksgiving and Christmas. The commercials are going to make it look like this is a time of loving and positivity and all. And it is. Don't get me wrong. It is. But this is also a time when many people are suffering the worst forms of depression, of mental anguish, of, of, of psychological and emotional trauma. Because Christmas time is the one time that most reminds persons of their loved ones that aren't here anymore. Sister Gail is, has recently lost her sister, Teresa, all right? Um, but she ain't the only one that has lost someone recently. On Facebook, I was looking the other day, saw how a couple persons had lost their mothers, lost their fathers. Uh, one of my colleagues in ministry, my little brother in ministry, uh, Reverend Antonio Neely, uh, lost, recently lost his big brother. And then turn around, his wife lost her son. And her son's children lost their daddy. This Christmas is going to be hard. This Thanksgiving is going to be hard because now there's an empty place at the dining room table. Now there's an empty place in the den. Now there's one less voice present in the fellowship, in the communion. It's going to be hard. And Sister Gail, thank you for raising that prayer request. My God, woo, thank you. Amen. Praise God. She also wants us to pray for her stomach, for her housing, her finances. She wants us to pray for her son, Teddy, and her daughter, Shamika. She wants us to pray for Rich and Carol, for Kathy, for Judy, for the homeless, for the jobless, for the sick, for the elderly, for the grieving, for the lonely, for the depressed, for those persons in the hospital and nursing homes, for kids, for teachers, for the ministry team, for the prayer list, and call for everyone, everywhere. Amen. We're going to do that. We're going to go to God in prayer on these very things. This is what I want you to do. I want you to touch. I want you to touch. Agree. I want you to put uh, the names of anyone who falls in any of these categories on our virtual altar as we go to God in prayer here. Let us uh, pray. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth. Father God, you have you have 
been so incredible, so amazing, so wonderful, that we would be wrong, terribly, horribly wrong, to begin any prayer asking you for anything without first pausing to praise you. God, you've been faithful. So faithful that you are your own definition of faithfulness. Regardless of who we may want to believe is faithful, we know that their faithfulness pales in comparison to you. God, you have loved us better than we loved ourselves. In fact, God, your love has surpassed, has surpassed a mother's love or a father's love for their children. For God, you have never given up on us. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. You've never let our enemies eat upon our flesh. You've been our strong towers. You've been our mighty fortresses. God, you've been our provider. You've given us what we need before we've even need, known that we needed it. God, you've been our healer. You've been our enabler. You've been our sustainer. You've been our comforter. You've been our guider our guide, you've been our, our, our sounding board. God, you've been everything to all of us for so very long. And for that, God, we want to praise your holy name. We want to exalt your holy name. We want to we, we give you every single thing that we have to us that's within us we want you to have our all because God you are our all in all Father God Sister Teresa has lifted up some prayer concerns and the one God that really resonates personally with me Pastor Al is the prayer is the prayer request that you bless Sister Gail in this holiday season Because this is the first holiday season without her sister, Teresa. I don't know, God, how long they had with each other. But clearly, Teresa meant something to Gail. She meant the word to, world to Gail. And not having Teresa here has pained our sister. God, we pray that you will be a comforter, that you will be a nurturer, that you will console her heart, her mind, and her spirit. That, God, you would enable Sister Gail to spend the, these holidays with loved ones where she wouldn't have to bear this weight alone. Surround her with friends. Surround her with family. Surround her with the people, God, that will love on her and remind her that you've never left her nor forsaken her. And it's not just Gail we're praying for. We're praying for persons all over this world who are going into this holiday season feeling remorse, feeling sad, feeling grief, wrestling with trauma. wrestling with brokenness God we pray that God you would be what you need to be for these people so that God they're able to experience the fullness and the abundancy of life Father God we pray for all the physical conditions and issues that Sister Gail is going through we pray for her daughter Shamika her son Teddy God we pray for Rich and Carol, for Judy, God. We pray for Kathy. We pray, God, for the homeless, the jobless, the sick, the ill, um, the kids, for the elderly, 
We pray for persons in hospitals and nursing homes. We pray for children and teachers. God, we pray for all the ministers on the minister prayer team and the prayer team call list, uh, prayer list. Uh, yeah, the prayer teams, ministry teams, prayer list. God, we pray uh, for everyone everywhere just as uh, Sister Gail has asked us to pray. And God, we hope and pray that not only will you answer these prayers, these explicit prayers that Sister Gail has lifted up, but answer the ones, God, that she has she has not mentioned, the ones that she's too scared to mention for fear that she would be ridiculed and isolated because of what she's dealing with, what she's going through. God, we love you and we thank you. It's in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. We are in our prayer conference call again. The phone line is up. You can call in. You can hear me. I just can't hear you. For some reason, the call will not let me turn off the mute function. So if, you, if you're if you on the call and you want to raise a prayer request, praise report, prayer, words of encouragement, testimony, or witness, you're going to need to come online to Facebook. Uh, come to First Fellowship Charlotte. Amen. Uh, that's our uh, name of our church. Uh, you'll find us online, First Fellowship Charlotte, uh, for, or First Fellowship Ministries of Charlotte. Uh, click on uh, the uh, the FaceTime, Facebook live broadcast, and you can type in your prayer request, or you can just simply go to my page. I've shared this to my page. You can go to Pastor Kevin's page. He's shared it to his page, and just click on the live broadcast, and then you're able to type in your prayer request, your praise reports, your prayers, your words of encouragement, your testimonies, witness, and witnesses. We don't want because of the um telephones malfunction to keep you from lifting up whatever prayer request that you have all right if you're online keep typing in your prayer request keep sending your prayer request if you're watching the playback right now on youtube send me the private message to my facebook profile al kennon amen k-e-n-n-o-n or send me an email pastor al kennon the third at gmail.com p-a-s T O R A L K E N N O N I I I at gmail.com and we will pray for you then. Amen. I see we've gotten some new prayer requests. Amen. Pray, uh, praise God. Okay. Amen. Evangelist uh, Yasmin Yamshed has asked that we pray. For the Pakistani children, Christian children, we need support to continue uh, education. Amen. That in Pakistan, there are Christians in Pakistan. So let me let me kill that devil because you know I know there's some people like what? I didn't know there were any Christians. Yeah, there are Christians all over the world, and so there's Christians in Pakistan. Uh, Evangelist Yasmin, uh, a Yasmin is asking us to pray that they get the resources they need to bless the children and the Christian children Pakistani in Pakistan who are attending uh, their schools all right they're trying to educate them and no it ain't just about educating who God is that is a major part of it but education is education. It's also teaching them how to read and write, teaching them how to count, teaching them history, teaching them science, teaching them health, teaching them the STEM courses. All that costs money. All that requires resources. And so Sister Yasmin is asking that we would touch and agree that we would pray with her uh, that God would provide those resources. And guess what, Sister Yasmin? It's not just there in Pakistan. It's right here in America, too. There are uh, plenty of American schools, both private and public, both Christian and non-Christian, that need the resources, that are lacking resources that they need in order to educate the children as they've been required to do. 
And so we're going to touch and agree. In fact, if you don't mind, Evangelist Jasmine, I'm going to use your prayer request uh, as a springboard prayer uh, to deal with this issue all over the world. All right. So uh, if you want to put a particular school on our virtual altar as I pray, that's fine. But I am putting all schools on the altar. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, hallowed is your name. It is high. And it is supposed to be revered. It's supposed to be revered above all else. Father God, we come before you in the presence of your name, asking you, God, to look out for the babies. They have to be educated, God. They have to learn. They have to go to school, God. That's the requirement. But as much as our systems, our states, our governments require us to educate our children, they are not forthcoming with the resources necessary to ensure that we get our children get the best education they can. Money is withheld, supplies are withheld, equipment are withheld. And these children have to fend for themselves and some of our babies cannot fend for themselves. Evangelist Jasmine is asking for help in Pakistan. But God, if we're going to be truthful, the help doesn't just need to be in Pakistan. It needs to be around the world. For there are huge regions of schools with kids where the kids do not have the resources they need to excel. In fact, God, in any major American city, we can see this bifurcation of need. This, 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 this dual is this a need because if you're in the suburbs or you're in that those part of towns with a high tax base, your schools get everything. If you're in the inner city where where there's high crime, low tax base, then your schools are lacking. God, we need that kind of foolishness to be eradicated and eliminated. We need that kind of foolishness to miss us so that our kids are able to grow into the productive citizens that you call them to be. Father God, thank you for Sister Yasmin not thinking it robbery to come before your throne and with the prayer warriors to touch and agree to ask for these resources. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, amen. Sister Brenda Hill, amen, is asking us to pray for her daughter. She says her daughter is having surgery today. Amen. Man, that's right. Amen, Sister Brenda. We are touching and agreeing her daughter is having surgery. It doesn't matter if she's having uh, an ingrown toenail removed, uh, something as simple as that. We are going to touch and agree and pray for your daughter, uh, as well as everyone who's going to have a surgical procedure happen today. Because here's the thing. Amen. Praise God. Here's, here's the thing. Death occurs. In the most serious surgery, in, in, in well, no, let me say it, death occurs in these simple outpatient surgeries as it, to the same degree that it occurs with these most serious surgeries. There is no surgery that is not dangerous to the human body. We are invading the human body. And any time we invade the human body, we put the body at risk of dying. So don't you sit here and think, Especially those people who may know Sister Brenda and her daughter. Well, she's just having X, Y, and Z. No, it, it, it's major. 
Anything could happen. I've seen in the dental, dental office, simple uh, dental surgery, and they had to call the ambulance because the person had a, had a stroke, had a heart attack. Simple surgery, filling in a cavity. That's it. But that was enough to trigger a heart attack. Or well, this was the time when a heart attack happened. So we're going to touch and agree. We're going to believe that God is faithful, not only for the daughter or sister, Brenda Hill, but for everyone going through it. So again, go ahead, put your family member on there. Put your friend, put your neighbor, put your church member, put whoever you need on our virtual altar. Go ahead and do that because that's the purpose of our prayer right now, which is to pray, which is to touch and agree. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we come to you right now, God, asking your keeping mercies, your protective mercy, your sustaining mercy. God, Sister Brenda Hill, her daughter is having surgery today. We don't know what for, and it's not important for us to not know what for. It's important, God, that we simply touch and agree that we pray. Pray for her well-being. Pray for her protection. Pray, God, for the well-being of every person that will be in that operating room today. We pray, God, that you would touch the heart, mind, and spirit of every single doctor in there, every anesthesiologist, every treat, every surgical, uh, every surgeon in there, every attending physician, every nurse, every nurse's assistant, every orderly. We, God, even pray that you would saturate the room and everything in there with your Holy Spirit so that everything in that operation, operating room has to uh, ab be obedient to you. Saturate the sutures, the towels, the, the gauze, the, the actual anesthesia itself, the, the, the scalpel, the clamps, uh, the x-ray machines, the, uh, the x-ray viewing machines. I mean, everything, the doors, the, the, the table, uh, the sink, the sponges, the... Uh, uh, The, the the all the equipment, the refrigerator, the medicines, the needles, the syringes, the uh, everything saturated all with your Holy Spirit. Whatever the persons that have to perform the surgeries are doing this are, are dealing with this morning, we ask you ask that you put that out of their minds, that you let them compartmentalize their lives so that God they're not distracted and they don't make a mistake as they perform this type of surgery. God, we pray that you do this not only for Sister Brenda Hill's daughter, that you do it for every single person that has to undergo surgery or will have to undergo surgery. In fact, God, there are some people, like we know there are some people God, that have had surgery scheduled today, but there's some people, God, that will have to have surgery because something is going to happen today. And so, God, we pray for those persons, too. It doesn't matter if it's the O-R or the E-R. God, keep your hands of grace and mercy all around them so that, God, they're able to come out. And, God, when you bring them out, heal them. Heal uh, Sister Brenda Hill's daughter and everyone else. Give them complete physical and mental and emotional recovery and restoration so that, God, they're able to celebrate you and glorify you for all the wonderful, awesome, amazing, and incredible things that you have done in their lives. We thank you, God, and we honor you, God. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Let's see. Pray. I, amen. We looked at that one. Amen. Pray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Just checking. Uh, ooh. Amen. Sister Olive asked that we would pray that God would have, that she does what God would have her to do. Sister Olive, amen. We're, we're going to hit that prayer. 
Amen. Uh, it was really part of that first prayer that I prayed about doing what God has called us to do. And so we're going to uh, uh, touch and agree. Amen. Praise God uh, with you and for you. Amen. I've got some prayer requests from some prayer warriors. Amen. Shabbat shabbat doom doom doom. Amen. Let me get trying to get to my list here. Amen. Praise God. Um, Dr. Suzanne Smith. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> has tendered some prayer requests for us to lift up. She wants us to pray uh, for her mother Sue's blood pressure. Uh, she's having some issues with blood pressure. She's having some issues with her stomach and her mind. Uh, uh, we want to pray that God goes gets gets right to the root of the issues and performs a wondrous supernatural work. Amen. She wants us to pray that uh, she completes her project and her paper this week with ease, wisdom, excellence, and ahead of schedule. Um, she wants us to pray that God leads her brother John in terms of what job is best for him. She wants us to pray that God gives a supernatural touch and restores and favor, favors all the areas in her areas in her life that she's asked him about. And she wants us to pray that Thanksgiving time is a, with her family is peaceful, loving, and very enjoyable. That last uh, prayer request, amen, uh, amen. You, you don't know, because some, some, many of us take for granted the loving situation we have, because we've always had loving uh, families and loving family members. But some people, their family life is hell. And, I'm, and please don't hear me saying that Dr. Smith's uh, family life is hell. But I'm taking what she said for those persons whose life, family life is hell. Who just want a t a one time where the family can come together and not be drama, pettiness, mess. One time. And so we're touching green. We're going to pray. Amen. Uh, Sister Vita Harrell is asking us that we pray and cover her uncle John Harold and heal his broken heart. The her, her uncle John lost his best friend last week and is having a hard time. I feel that. She wants us to pray for Wesley Simpson. His house burned down and he lost almost everything. Now let me say this. Sister Vita, I don't know if you're online or if you're going to watch later. But you tell Brother Wesley he didn't lose almost everything. His all in all is God. He may have lost a house. He may have lost clothes. He may have lost furniture. He may have lost a computer, TVs, whatever, books. But these are all material things that can be replaced. They can all be replaced. But God told life. He told the enemy the one thing that it they could not have was Brother Wesley himself. <laughs> so you tell Brother Wesley. And while he may have lost all those things, he ain't lost what he needs, which is God. And if you trust God, God will give it all back to him. She wants us also, Sister Vita also wants to pray, us to pray for her mother, Sister Minnie Clyburn. She has been sick for the past six weeks and is slowly getting better. She wants us to pray for full healing and restoration of her body. She wants us to also pray for one of her twin daughters, Ayana, as she prepares for her lit review papers. Amen for qualifiers. I I know about that. That literature review is part of uh, what it's it's part of the doctoral writing process. That before you can move forward, you have to have your literature reviewed, and and if your literature is not up to your chapters on your literature is not up to snuff, you don't even get past that. You are, you are removed from the program. So I get it. 
She wants us also to pray for Brianna as she completes the semester and begins uh, getting ready for exams. She wants us also to pray for her MRI uh, on Monday coming up, goes smoothly and that she is calm and doesn't panic so that they can get through the procedure. I understand. She also wants us to pray for Arlene Jones for the healing of her body and her mind. Amen. Dr. Suzanne Smith, is, uh, nah, duh, I said it already. I mean, Dr. Ashlyn Curry is wants us to pray for her her and her cousin's annual beach trip. Uh, she, Patrice, LaDonna, and Kenya are um, joining. Um, uh, they're touching and agreeing for peace and, and enjoyment and love and protection during this uh, uh, trip. She wants us to pray that her mother's surgery, her mother's having surgery on her heart goes well, no complications, and that she follows the doctor's orders. She also wants us to pray for Pontiac United Education Coalition, Pontiac Reeves, and we love lit. lit. We love lit. Uh, pray we are awarded grants, the grants that we wrote, and the Pontiac children excel. Amen. Amen. Let me look over here. Uh, I don't see any additional prayer requests. If you have them, I want you to put them on our altar as we go to God in prayer. We're going to raise an omnibus prayer containing all these uh, prayer requests. So here, let us go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we thank you, God, right this moment for all the things you are, all the things you have done, all the things you are doing, and all the things you will do. God is just not who you are, but who you will always be to us. You will always be our model of consistency. You will always be our example of faithfulness. You will always be our demonstration of love. Father God, let us know that no matter whether it's a fiery furnace or a lion's den, whether, whether it's the wilderness or the desert, whether it's an enemy against us, or one person, no matter who it is, what it is, we, God, understand that you are with us and you have us. You've got us. You are protecting us, providing for us, counseling us, nurturing and consoling and sustaining and just doing an amazing thing, healing us, God. God. We just had a prayer request or a prayer about surgery. Sister Brenda Hill's daughter was going to have surgery today. Well, God, Sister Ashlyn Curry's mother needs you to cover her as well. Watch over her, protect her, keep her. God, she's not the only one. Uh, Sister... Vita Harrell on Monday has to go in for an MRI. She's nervous. She's scared. She's anxious. She needs you right now to speak to her, speak through her, speak in her so that she's able to undergo that MRI and then come out of it with no worries, no concerns, no, no issues. God, Someone else has to undergo a procedure. And whoever it is, God, we pray that you will be as good and faithful to them as you are to Sister Brenda Hill's daughter and Sister Ashlyn Curry's mother. Heal God. Sue heart souls, blood pressure. Heal her medical issues with her stomach. Heal God her mind. Do it supernaturally so that persons will know this kind of healing only occurs to you. This kind of healing only happens to you. You know, God, I think 
many times we have made your miraculous working power more commonplace than it is. That God, you require all. But God, many times we give you blah. You recall you require majesty. But many times, God, we give you commonality. And so, God, help us to not only discern when you're doing something miraculous in our life, but help us to praise you like we've lost our minds. God, we pray that you'll let Dr. Smith complete her project with excellence and let her complete it ahead of time. God, we pray for her brother, John, that, God, you would help him, lead him, guide him, counsel him about the next job you want him to take. God, we pray that you would touch Dr. Smith's life supernaturally and you restore uh, and favor all the areas of her life that she has told you about. God, she's praying. And God, I'm touching and agreeing. She's praying for peace among family members that the Thanksgiving holiday is a joyous a time, occasion. There's not any drama. There's not any uh, confusion, pettiness, or mess. That God, you would uh, create an environment where persons are able to feel loved during this time. And it's not just Dr. Smith, God, but it's a whole lot of persons out here who are praying this same prayer. God, just get me through the next week. God, just make it so I can get through these those six hours uh, on Thanksgiving. God, get me through having to see this person. Because, God, it has been contentious in the past. And these persons do not want to have to deal with such contention anymore. Father God, we pray that you'll be already into their Thanksgiving holidays and their Christmas holidays, saturating the space with love and togetherness so that they may have the experience they're desiring with and among their family members. Father God, we pray for Uncle John Harold, that God, you would nurture him, comfort him, console him in the loss of his best friend. We pray for Wesley Simpson. That God, even though he may have lost almost every material thing he had, let him know that he has not lost you. And that God, in your timing and according to your will, you will give him back everything, God, that, that he has lost. We pray for Minnie Clyburn, God, that she's been sick and ill the last week, that, that she's slowly coming out of it. God, we pray that you would heal her, God. We pray, God, that you would restore her, God. And let her uh, slow down some. We pray for Sister Yana as she prepares for her literature review and her educational process. We pray, God, for Sister Brianna as she starts to prepare for finals. We pray, God, for, again, for uh, Sister Vita. We pray for Sister Arlene Jones for the healing of her mind and body. God, we pray for Sister Patrice, Sister Ashley. Sister LaDonna and Sister Kenny, Ken, not Kenny, Kenya, as they all plan for their annual cousin's beach trip. We pray that they're safe and sound. We pray, God, that you provide protection and provision for them. Take them to the beach. Let them have a good time and bring them back uh, in one piece. God, we pray uh, for the Pontiac United Education Coalition, Pontiac Reeves, and We Love Lit, that we pray those grants get awarded and the children excel God and as we said we pray for Ashlyn Curry's mother for heart surgery that God you let nothing happen. Father God is in your son's mighty matchless marvelous and magnificent and before we say amen we pray for every other person that's in a situation just like this that has the same prayer request so it, that you would do for them what you're doing for these individuals. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Praise God. We want to thank you for being here with us today, being part of our uh, inspirational prayer conference call. We pray that it's been a blessed call. We pray that it's been one that has helped you uh, 
uh, encouraged you, equipped you, enabled you, empowered you, inspired you, edified you, educated you. Whatever it is that you needed this morning, that God gave it to you and gave it to you in spades so that you can be the disciple and steward that God is calling you to be. Now what we're going to do, we're going to shut this gravy train down. We'll be back at 12 right here on the same bat channel. The same bat station for Bible study, noonday Bible study. Come back, join us for Bible study um, at 12 o'clock today. But we're going to shut this down so that we can recuperate, get ourselves together, and handle some things between now and then so that we may serve the Lord God Almighty with excellence and with effectively and efficaciously at 12 o'clock today. Let's have our closing word of prayer, then we're going to get busy enjoying this day that the Lord has made. With that said, let us pray. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, we thank you, God, for your faithfulness, your goodness, your theological consistency, God, your, your spiritual consistency, your familial consistency, God. Everything about you is consistent, so consistent, God, that we can set our watches to your schedule and your demonstrations with that, God. We can stand on love, knowing, God, that you love us. Now, Father God, we pray that this time we spent together praying, lifting you up, magnifying you, touching and agreeing in your son's name has been not for naught that, God, you would allow uh, our prayer requests to hit your eardrums. And when they hit your eardrums, that, God, you would be motivated and moved to move on our behalf. God. I thank you, and I love you, and I pray that you protect us, keep us, and never leave us till we return again next week to worship you in spirit and truth. It's in your son's mind. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, and magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Amen. Have a blessed day. We will pray with you again later. Bye-bye.